Hi, I'm Stijn Almus, and today's lesson is about how we can see the size of the sphere, and then basically from two eyes or two views, or stereo or two cameras, whatever you want to call it. And uh, here's what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do. I'm going to derive a formula for the radius uh, of a sphere from two views, and radius is, of course, expressed as quadrants. And I'm going to test predictions from that formula in uh, two experiments with real spheres and a real camera, or real objects at least. And then, of course, I'm going to compare the visual predictions uh, from the formula with direct measurements. So um, what's the situation if we have a sphere and we have a projection on an image, a central projection, so then we have a visual cone, uh, the yellowish, greenish, cone there. Um, and if we look at the formulas, which I've done in an earlier lesson, we can express the visual spread P as uh, a proportion of quadrants A and D. And note, it's only a proportion. So we know the proportion if we can measure P, but we don't know what A or D is. But if we take uh, uh, two views of the sphere, like this, two cameras or two eyes, then we have two visual cones. And I'm going to assume that the base length, so the distance between the cameras or the distance between the eyes, is known. So that's our base. And what we want to know is the radius of the sphere expressed in quadrants, as I usually do. So let's get started with some uh, simple math. So here are two points, those are the viewpoints and a sphere with a center. And these are the two visual cones from the, from the two eyes or two cameras. And the base length is, as I said, E, quadrants E. And we also have two distances from the viewpoints to the center of the sphere, D1 and D2. And we also have spreads. So we have the base and the two directions. And U1 is the um, spread between the direction from viewpoint 1 and the baseline. U2 is the spread between the baseline and the other view direction. And then U3 is the spread between the two viewing directions. And now we can use the spread law from rational trigonometry, which says that uh, look at the picture, u1 over opposite, d2, opposite quadrants d2 is u2 divided by d1 is u3 divided by e. And if we rearrange that, we have expressions for d1 and d2. So basically, we know the position of the center of the sphere from two views, two visual cones. So d1 is u2 over u3 times E, and D2 is U1 over U3 times E. So now um, let's focus our attention on the radius of the sphere, because that's, that's what we want to know, and observe that the um, radius, so the light rays graze the surface, and because it's a sphere, it's tangent to the radius. And we know P1, P2, so those are the visual semi-spreads. So how big is the sphere in the projection? And uh, we have D1, D2, and I showed you the formula earlier. P1 is A over D1, and P2 is A over D2. If we rearrange this a little bit, we get an expression for A and another expression for A. And let's remind ourselves that we already have an expression, or two expressions, for D1 and D2. We can simply fill them in. So now we have two expressions for the radius of the sphere. So A is P1 times U2 over U3 times E. And it's also P2 times U1 over U3 times E. So basically you can see there that if, well, um, P1 U2 U2 is equal to P2 U1 if um, these are two visual cones for a sphere. 
if it's another type of object, you don't get that nice, um, um, nice equivalence. So here we have a simple formula. Uh, and observe that we don't need d1 and d2 anymore explicitly. We don't need to find them before we can find two, um, well, two expressions for a and um, so also two outcomes if we do uh, a measurement. I always enjoy that type of uh, animation. I don't know why I'm doing this. So here's the, um, the result. So you know baseline E and from the left camera you know P1 and U2. From the right camera you know P2 and U2. U2. And then also the spread between the two viewing directions is U3. And then you have A. So let's do an experiment. So um, I put an A4 here in my office on the floor with uh, a large ball and a smaller, um, that's a table tennis ball. And uh, I shifted the camera so it's from the left and from the right. So if you over, uh, do an overlay, it looks something like this. And um, for the small ball, it's actually, um, here it's a table tennis ball. Oh. And um, the direct measurement with the caliper was 39.5 plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. So that's pretty precise measurement for the diameter. And the formula for this stereo situation right, from two views predicts 40 plus or minus one millimeter. So it's a little bit less precise than the caliper measurement. Um, but the difference, so the accuracy is half a millimeter, which is not bad for uh, normal cameras. Uh, well, I'm using an iPhone camera. And for the larger ball, um, so the direct measurement is not that precise. It's 120 millimeters in diameter. And the prediction is 119.6 plus or minus 0.2. So that's more precise than the other measurement. So the difference is again, uh, half a millimeter, 0.4 millimeter. So that's pretty good. So the accuracy is pretty good and the precision um, is a little bit better in the for the large ball. So that's nice, but that's indoors. Now let's go out, let's go outdoors and uh, use this trick in a, or this method in a bigger scene. So this is a picture from a lecture hall. I was teaching computer vision. And um, this is my left picture. And um, what I'm gonna focus on are, oh, hold on. Yeah, these two objects. So on the right, you see a statue. Uh, the statue is called Angry Boy. I will get into that a little bit later. And in the middle, you see a light pole. And I'm focusing on um, actually the, well, it's a circular, how do you call that? Section, circular section. So I wanna know the width of that uh, light, light pole. And so this is the left picture from the left camera. And now this is the picture from the right camera. So all of a sudden you see a big light ball in the scene from um, uh, that's very close to the, to the building. Uh, by the way, this is in the center of Amsterdam. And let's go to the middle. And um, again, you see the um, angry boy statue on the right and the light ball on the left and for that let's let's focus on angry boy first because i want to estimate the, i'm going to assume that his head is a sphere and i want to estimate the radius of that sphere and angry boy is made by artist victor Frezo in 2017 and i, I looked at his website and he has some measurements so the height of the statue is uh, three and a half meters and then the width and the depth is one and a half meters. And it's, it's a bit tricky, of course. I mean, um, you can also see that his head is not entirely spherical. 
and maybe his uh, shoulders are a little bit broader than his head. But I'm gonna stick to the one and a half meters for now as, as an estimate. Let's look at the results. So well, as I said, direct measure, well, it's not direct, it's from the website, one and a half meters. And the prediction from the two views is 1.27 meters, plus or minus one centimeter. So that's rather precise. And you have to imagine that the distance is about um, uh, 100 meters. Maybe you can, it's hard to tell, but um, there's a road and then there's a canal and it's across the um, canal in a garden. Uh, So now let's look at the light pole and I have to, um, uh, to, what's the word here? It's maybe a disappointment that I don't have measurements for it, but what I do want to point out is that the prediction from this method is that the light pole has a diameter of 18 centimeters, 0.18 meter, plus or minus one. So that's pretty precise for, um, uh, let, me, let me go back to the, picture. So that's at a distance of about 30 meters from the from the lecture room. All right, so what do we have? I've derived for you a rather simple formula for um, the radius of a sphere from two views. And what is really nice, and I'm getting that more often, is that I get two expressions. So, which means I do two measurements with one setup, and that's why I can also, that's what I showed you, I can also um, calculate precisions, standard deviations. So, we not only have the difference between real measurement, but also the precision of uh, our measurements. And I've shown you the case of two views, uh, stereo picture of um, balls on the floor here in my office and to round objects in a distance. So the um, light pole is obviously not spherical, but the, um, the, uh, the section is uh, circular. So I'm, I'm using that in one dimension less. And um, uh, the general conclusion here is that the predictions are both accurate and precise. Of course, I can do a little bit more measurements and I will in the future, but for now, this is, um, uh, I think this will do. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have comments or questions, please put them below. And if you want to contact me directly, go to my website. Uh,